Okay, my family. So we are going to do. Um, you already know. We're going to do some tumblers. So the spray paint, so smooth, so smooth, so fresh, fresh and smooth. So they came out really smooth and fresh. <laughs> So we're going to go to our next step. So we need alcohol and I just use a little medicine cup and um, so you can use whatever percentage of alcohol that you have. It used to be like 92% alcohol and now um, depending on where you get it from it could be 70, it could be whatever. So I've, I haven't found one that didn't work. Um, you're going to need some paper towels, um, and so I'm just going to pop a few off here, and then you're going to need some brushes. So in my, um, in my, in the description box, I'll have the brushes that I use. It's like a pack of either 16 or 32, I can't remember, but they're brushes from Amazon that work great. Um, and then I am using today a mixture of uh, Brie Reese, Bria Reese um, alcohol inks and Ranger alcohol inks. Um, I like these two as well as the Pinata brand. So any of those brands will work, but the Ranger gives you those different shades of brown that you need if you're going to try to deal with the wood colors. So just keep that in mind. To get started, we want to damp our um, brush. Mine's is already damp because I did this tumbler over here a few minutes ago. Um, so the next thing you're going to do is put um, a couple of drops. It's probably too many. <laughs> a couple of drops of ink on your tum on your brush. I uh, prefer to put it on my brush when I am doing a painted tumbler than on to the tumbler itself because it leaves like these little spot things when you do it the other way. And so you can see I put about three um, drops of each color on my tumbler. And now I'm just going to smooth that on around or distribute that ink all the way around the tumbler. Um, I'm going to have to stop and add more ink um, every couple of swipes just to uh, make sure that, you know, I have enough ink to go all the way around, especially if my brush is um, not very damp. So I'm just going to continue that all the way around this whole tumbler and then I'm going to make sure that I get the bottom of the tumbler as well. So so we're just going to do that. And just so you guys are aware, I am shooting from two cameras, so I got two angles going on. So if you see my eyes looking and they're not looking exactly at you, that's why I'm trying to hit both cameras so I can do it both in a vertical and a horizontal record. So we're going to see how that works. But um, so you see that is the complete tumbler. Some people can do it just like this and they're happy with that look. Um, just make sure you get the bottom so that your bottom's done as well. Um, so I'm going to let this one sit here and go ahead. I have to do two of these, so I'm going to go ahead and just get the other one done while we're here. And then that way, if for some reason you miss this process, you get it a second time around. Again, just a couple of drops of the colors that I am using. And just so that you are aware of the colors that I am using, again, I am using Bria Reese's Brown. Rangers Caramel and Rangers Latte. So those are the three colors that I am using today. Um, again, I am using mostly my solve brushes, um, which are the black ones actually. I use just a big old makeup brush for 
um, the first distribution of the inks and then I go back and use my saw brushes to do everything else that I need to do. So um, this brush right here is actually not a soft brush. It might have been a brush I got like from um, Walmart or somewhere. I am not a big makeup wearer, if y'all can't tell. <laughs> so um, I buy these makeup brushes solely for doing this or any other arts and crafts that may require it. Um, so like I said, you want to make sure you get a nice coat all the way around. Um, I was going to say an even coat, but it really doesn't even have to be even because you can come back. The good thing about alcohol ink is you can come back and fill in as necessary. It's very forgiving. Um, so now we have our two tumblers. Like some people, like I said, you can just go with that because of the lines that the brush makes. Um, it kind of already gives you a really good look. Um, so, but if you want it to be a little bit more detailed, um, you could then put your big brush down. I'll show you how to clean them all in a second. Get your, um, next to the biggest brush. Um, there, like I said, they're going to be tons of brushes in your pack. So, you know, just find a size that you're comfortable with working with. Um, this is the size that I'm using. I'm only going to be using this one for a few minutes before I drop to one of these smaller ones. So I'm using this one to make myself a um, knot. So I try to find where I've laid down the most amount of ink so that I have a lot of ink to work with. So right here it's a darker spot. So I'm going to um, move that darker spot around. So for here... I just make um, a knot into the shape that I want, you know, and each shape could be different each time I do one of these tumblers, um, but I just decide as I'm going, honestly, you know, so like I made that shape, but then I decided to extend this a little bit more. So you can do that. Like I said, ink, the alcohol ink is very forgiving in what it does. Um, so once I have that, and you can see there's a rim around my first part of my knot. So now all I'm going to do is with my smaller brushes, again, putting that alcohol ink on there, maybe sometimes dropping some ink on there if I don't feel like I have enough in this middle section, then I'm going to start pushing my ink around inside of the perimeter that I've already set. So I just do that all the way around and give myself a second layer. And one day I'm going to have words for this, but I'm going with layer right now today. So I give myself that second layer. So you can see there's two now in my knot. And I keep doing that until I'm happy with the way that the knot looks. So again, I am just taking my brush and pushing that ink to where it is creating a darker line that is creating my layers for my knot. So there's the third one. And I keep doing that. If I feel like I am, my ink is running dry, I either put a drop of ink, but you got to be careful so it don't roll down and then you got to start your process. Um, you got to fix whatever it rolls onto, or I just put it right on my brush. Again, trying not to put too much because too much can also be a little chaotic. So again, there's another layer. And then when I get to the middle, I use one of my smaller brushes um, just so that I can kind of go back and forth. Um, let me do another layer like this all the way around there. And again, I'm just pushing that ink and then I will just push. Um, and so here's like where it's one of those areas may, that I may want to just add a little bit of ink to my brush and knock off some of the excess 
and then I can go in and just really give some definition to that inner um, circle of my knot there. So it's hard to do this and show y'all at the same time. But, you know, I will do something like that. And that looks good to me. And then there's my first knot. So then, um, and see like here, I see a white spot. Again, alcohol ink is forgiving. So I just took my big brush again over that spot and bam, it looks, it looks like it's supposed to look like, you know, so it's, it's okay to have mistakes and, or not have something completely covered because you can always go back and fix whatever you think is wrong. Um, and even if I decide I don't like this knot, I can brush right over that and do it again. So um, there is that. And then so I'm going to do one more knot on this one. I typically try to get them on opposite sides. And I try to do one at the top and one at the bottom and one in the middle and one at the bottom. So again, I'm going to take... Oh, I just knocked over my alcohol without seeing it. So I'm going to take one of my bigger brushes, make myself a perimeter again. For the bottom one, I always like to go over the bottom and then back around um, and give it a nice, like it's going underneath kind of look. So that would be that. See how it goes underneath there. So um, from here, this brush is kind of wet. From here, I can stick with this brush maybe one more round, but then I'm going to have to go to a smaller brush. So I'm going to do my second layer in here. And again, all I'm doing is pushing the ink that's already in there all the way around to where I already have that perimeter or that border of ink already. And bam, there's my second layer. And then I'm going to move to a smaller brush. I'm going to add a little bit more alcohol ink onto my smaller brush. Again, pulling off the excess. The excess. And then um, like this one has a lot. So I'm going to have to, I'm just moving some of this alcohol ink around so that it can be in the places where I need it. And then um, I'll come back through and push it to where I need it to be. So um, a lot of the questions that I get uh, when people see these videos is whether or not I seal my tumblers. I typically do not seal my tumblers. And that seems to be a surprise for people. And there are some people who say, that when they go to put the epoxy on, it moves, the inks move around. I have not experienced that, and I don't know if that's, you know, how hard you're putting that epoxy on and rubbing, or, you know, whether it's not dry enough. Um, uh, typically, I am not doing my whole process in one sitting. Um, so my tumblers may sit, you know, to the next day. Um, typically I have not had that issue. Even if I do it within the same sitting, there is my second knot again underneath looking super freaking cute. And now I can put whatever logo design that I want to put on this. And this tumbler is done after I do, I do seal them with, um, I don't seal them to seal in the alcohol ink, but I do seal them, of course, so that you can wash it and all of that. So there is that second one. Um, sometimes what I'll do with the smaller of the brushes is um, take take the brush and then just make little lines down uh, 
um, sometimes it gives it like a baseball bat kind of feel when you do that. So I will do going around the knots. I typically start at a knot and then just kind of cycle all the way around. You see that? Here is the one that I put the little lines on. Try to give it a little extra accent. But as you can see, like right here, I'm going to need to come back with some alcohol ink because my brush was too wet. And then here is the one where I did. So not a whole lot of difference, but I can see a difference. <laughs> so. Okay, to finish these two projects, I am using the Illuminite, Illuminite, uh, Illuminite Amazing Clear Cast Epoxy, and it is a one-to-one. -one. Um, the bottle tells you that you have about 30 to 40 minutes work time, and if you were demolding something, you would have 12 to 24 hours. Um, so we are going to go ahead because we are doing all three tumblers, which is probably still way too much. I'm going to do 30 ounces of each side, giving us 60 ounces total to cover these three cups or two cups in a mason jar, actually. So, um, I'm going to pour out. Like I said, our two sides. Um, and with this, you definitely want to use gloves and you definitely want to have a mask on if you have one. Um, and I will have all that kind of stuff down in the description box. Um, epoxy is definitely something that um, people react differently to. So you want to make sure that you are taking care of yourselves, not inhaling this more than you have to, wearing your mask when you have to. And I believe this is something that you can even develop, like even if nothing bothered you before, you can develop um, oh, an allergy to it. So you just need to be, again, really careful with your self. Um, but we're going to mix up side A and side B here. And then we're just going to make sure that as we're styling this, that we get what's on the side of the cup and make sure that that gets down into our mixture so that we don't have one side that's never interacted with the other side, which means we're just gonna have a sticky mess. Um, uh.